right, here we go. So we are doing... Okay, gentlemen, shh, Jerry, turn around. Okay, so today we are doing relations and functions word problems. So we have a team of home economists that were cooking hamburgers. They found that after six minutes of cooking the hamburgers, the moisture content of the hamburger was 48% by weight. This is so funny. Rather dry. Okay. Right. Then, after 10 minutes of cooking time, it was 40% moisture by weight. So the first thing that we want to do here is we want to graph this relation. So these are actually really, really easy. These are some of the easiest word problems ever. So here's how we're going to do it. Um, so remember the, the variable that goes on the x-axis is the one that controls whatever's on the y-axis. So you guys tell me, what, what would go on the x-axis? We have two choices. We have cooking time or moisture content. On the x-axis. Time. time. In other words, the longer the time that it's cooked, the less moisture it has. Did I already give the extra credit sheet to somebody? Oh, no. No. That's true. You just forgot. I'm sorry. Um, sorry. Hang on, I gotta pause it. Okay, we are back. We found our extra credit sheet. Shh. So, we all, before that mishap, decided that on the x-axis was time, right? Yes. Time or tea. Meaning, the longer we cook this hamburger patty, the more dry it becomes. Okay. And so that means on the y-axis would be what? Moisture content. Okay, they actually give us, if we look down further in the problem, it actually says use T for the number of minutes of cooking time. So this is T and C for the moisture content in percent. So let's put that here. Now, um, if we have, yeah, if you guys have, are there questions? This, C, and then percent. So C stands for moisture content and then a little percent sign. Okay, so now, um, what we're going to do here is we have, we're going to make some coordinates. The first one is that um, after six minutes of cooking time, so six minutes of cooking time, the moisture content was 48%. So that's our first coordinate. What, so can somebody tell me what the second coordinate would be? If the first one is 6, 48, um, does it help to do last names? Elizabeth, would last names be easier? Okay. Um, Feinerman. Um, ten. Good. 1040. All right, everybody give it up for firemen. Okay, so we have no numbers on this graph yet. So anybody have any suggestions about what what a good, oops, what good units or uh, what the scale should be on the C-axis? Meaning we know we have to get up to at least 40, 48, somewhere in there, probably percent goes all the way to 100. But Unger? 5. 5, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. That might work. Put by fours, threes. Let's go tens. Let's go tens. Ten, twenty. I don't know how well you all. Can you see that up there? If I use the smaller pen. Fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety, one hundred. Okay. All right. So now on the time or t axis. Suggestions. By ones. Okay, we know we're gonna get at least out to ten. Yeah, they're by minutes. Two. Yeah. Let's do twos, just in case we end up going over. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. And again, our viewers at home, all of our audience members got a copy of these notes, so we're all just filling it in. Whoops, sixteen, eighteen, twenty. Everybody fill this in. Thirty. Okay, shh with the pen. Okay, so somebody tell me how to graph point 648. We all better know how to graph the point 648. Clark? All right, give it up for Clark. To the right, 6, up 48. Obviously, this is an approximation. All right, somebody tell me how to graph the point 1040. Underhill. Over 10, up 40. All right, everybody give it up for Underhill. Right about there. All right. What do we do with these two points? Draw a line. Good. Everybody give yourself props for answering the question correctly. Okay, here we go. So, okay, so now, 
You guys tell me, would it make sense to extend these lines past our axes? No, why not? They're not supposed to be. Okay, why not? Angel? Yeah, there's no there's no such thing as a negative percent of something. Just like there's no such thing, at least in this dimension, of negative time. Okay, so that's, let's put these coordinates, 648 and 1040. All right, everybody give it up for Angel for that explanation. Okay. Dude, everybody give it up for Angel for that explanation. All right, next step. Write an equation for the Unger. Turn around. Shh, stop talking. Write an equation for the relation, use T for the number of minutes, cooking time, and C for the moisture content. We have done this before. We have done this, but in terms of X and Y. We're going to start with X and Y, and then we'll, then we'll uh, come back and do plug in the C and T. So we have an X1, a Y1, an X2, a Y2. Anybody have any idea where we're going with this? This should be review. Slope. Good. Okay, somebody tell me how to find the slope. Let's do that first. Step one is the slope if we're writing the equation of the line. So how do I, what is the equation for slope? Mirabal? Good. Everybody give it up for Mirabal. Okay. Matson, Bose? Go ahead. For the y-intercept, yes. Right, right, before it's been cooked. So think of a, everybody get a visual in your head of like a red meat patty, 50%, you know, moisture. Yes, that it is. Okay, so can someone plug some stuff in here for all of these variables? Okay, let's get somebody to, I know why I volunteer all the time. Driga? Forty my okay, forty minus forty eight over ten minus six. Okay, everybody give it up for Driga. All right, so that comes out to eight over four, negative eight over four, which is negative two. Okay, now step two, you can't see. Let's move it up so you can. So step two would be the line equation. Y minus y one equals m times x minus x one. Unger. Shh. Salmon. Don't make me movie. Oh, that's right. Okay. So, somebody plug some stuff in here for me. Maxi. Good. Everybody give it up for Maxi. Yay. All right, now, how do I simplify this? What do I do to simplify? Lumaquin. Good. And last step. Okay, good. And how do we get y by itself? I'm going to keep going with you. Add 48. Awesome. y equals negative 2x plus 60. Everybody give it up for Lumaquin. Okay, but the thing is, we it said specifically in our directions to use c and t. So which one goes in for which? c goes in for either y or x, and t goes in for either y or x. So which is which? Okay, good. T is X, so it's negative 2T plus 60. All right. So that's our equation. And then part C, it says use the equation and or the graph to predict the moisture content after 20 minutes of cooking time. So how would I do that? It says use the equation and or the graph. So one or the other, or both. Um, Ram? Okay. So how would we use it? What would we do? Good. And what would I plug in where? Um, plug in or how about 20 for TV? Right. Good. Excellent. Everybody give it up for RAM. How about everybody give it up for RAM? Okay. So everybody shout it out. What is negative 2 times 20? Negative 40. Negative 40. Plus 60 is? 20. 20. So the moisture content of this very dry hamburger after 20 minutes of cooking time is 20%. Isn't that nice? 
Okay, so you also could, somebody kind of give me a rundown of if I wanted to use the graph, how I would do that? What would I do? Own. 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 Thank you. Okay, good. Good. So I could also, exactly what you're saying, um, if I continue the slope and go over, I could find it that way. What else? What's another way? Feinerman. So if I want to find, go ahead. You could go up 20 and then do the line thing. Okay, so if we go over to 20 minutes cooking time on the T-axis and draw a vertical line up and then straight over to see where it intersects the Y or C-axis, that would be another way. Okay, questions on that? So you see that you end up getting 2020. 2020. Anybody watch 2020? Yeah. What is that? It's a show on TV. Okay, Madsen Bose. What's up? Yes. Right. So that's why, depending on how accurate your graph is, you're going to be really close or really not. So that's why I, you are, you tend to be more mathematically accurate if you use the equation. I would say probably err on the side of caution. Yes. Other questions? Yep. To set, we have one more turn. Yeah, everybody turn the page over. Um, but yeah, the, this is the general concept. All right, here we go. Last one. In South City, the cost C of a taxi ride is a linear function of the distance traveled D. And a two-mile ride costs $5, a five-mile ride costs $11, and we're doing the same thing that we did in the last problem. So, somebody start me out. I want to graph first. So we need a couple of coordinates. So if we look back at the last one, we created the coordinates based on the information that we were given, 6 and 48, 10 and 40. So in this one, Matt's in Bose. All right, give it up for Matt's in Bose. Whoops, fine. Seriously, give it up for Matson Bose. Okay, this, so this, gentlemen, this is where the loudness comes to good use. Okay, you can yell? You can yell, yes. Let it on out there when you're cheering for people. Okay, here we go. Why would you give them permission to do that? Only when you are applauding other people. Okay. In South City, the cost C of a taxi ride. All right, so you guys tell me. On, we have two variables here. We have cost and we have distance traveled. Which one goes on the x-axis? Mirrorball. Distance or D. Excellent. Give it up for Mirrorball. That's good. All right. Now, we have the coordinates 2, 5, and 5, 11. So what do we think as far as scales on the D, D axis? What do we think? What would be a good scale there? One. Okay, that's good. One, two, three, four. Okay, how about on the C axis? Two. I like those. That's good. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Okay. Sixteen. Taxis are expensive. They're really expensive. Sometimes they're necessary, though. Okay. So, two, five, and five, eleven. Somebody tell me how to graph those two points. What do you think? Uh, O'Brien? Over two and three. Oops, okay, go over two and up five. So that's halfway through. Everybody give it up for O'Brien. The second one, um, Garcia? Over five. over five, up 11. Everybody give it up for Garcia. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, what do we do with those two points? Yeah. Draw a line. Draw a line. Do I want to go past my. No, no. Oh, yes. no. That's good. Why not? There's no such thing as negative distance. Excellent. Is it is it mathematically accurate to put an arrow at the end of this? If we're ta so let's think about what we're talking here. Cost of a taxi ride. Does it keep going up the farther you go? Yeah. Yeah. So that that arrow they don't they don't tend to have a cap on it. Like however far you go, that's how much you're paying. Yeah. So cost in dollars is up on the. Y axis. It costs two dollars to go zero miles. We can verify that though. Yeah. 
Sometimes that's what they do. Sometimes they have a flat fee just for taking the taxi, and then beyond that, it's a, a function of how many miles you travel. A lot of yeah, a lot of taxis do that. Okay. Now, if we're following the same set of steps, we have the graph. Now we want to write an equation for the function. How do we? What did we start with on the last one? Lou McQuinn. Excellent. Good. Give it up for Luma Quinn. Oh, yeah. oh, did I cut you off? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Continue. Did I cut you off? Good. Okay. Everybody give it up again for Luma. Okay. Step two. What was step two? Rosander. Um, y minus y1 equals nx minus All right. Everybody give it up for Rosander. Can't see it. Can't see it. Yay. Thank you. All right. Now we can. Okay. So, Clark. Y minus y Good. Two. All right. Good. Everybody give it up for Clark. Oh, yeah. It kind of got boring after the second time. It got boring after the set. Well, you know what? If you hey, that's wanna, ADHD for you. If you would like to run up here and do a little cheer, no. you can do that. Do it. Yeah. Do it. All right. So, simplifying. Y minus 5 equals 2X minus 4. Add 5 to both sides. Add 5. Y equals 2X plus 1. Okay, so our graph is a teeny bit off. Teeny bit off. Why do I say that? Why is my graph a little bit off? Well, two yes, human error, but angel y. What's what's what does not match? That's good, right? The y intercept should be one, so my graph is not as accurate as it could or should be. Which is again why I prefer the equation. What? It did. Okay, so mine is off, obviously. Okay. All right. What's the matter? Okay, everybody zip it. So the graph is off. My graph is off. Everybody else, I guess, has better graphs than mine. That's okay. Um, so it's off because the y-intercept is supposed to be at positive 1, but the way that I drew mine, it's at positive 2. So that's okay. good. So you all are doing better than I am. Yay. Give yourselves a round of applause for that. You're doing better than I am. That's good. Okay. I have to go back and plug in some variables. Matt's and Bose. Go ahead. Okay. We talking about parabolas? <laughs> yeah. What? We're not there yet. We're, we'll get there later this semester. So we're, uh, the question is about parabolas. We'll get there. Garcia? Go ahead. Oh, at the very bottom, yeah. So let's, for before we get there, what, what do I plug in for y and x? C and D. Okay, so C equals 2D plus 1. So that's the equation. And then C equals 2 times 4 plus 1. So you get how much for the cost of the ride? Nine dollars. All right, everybody, give it up for Garcia. Yeah. All right, awesome. Yeah. yeah, Clark. You wouldn't want to do the graph of your graphs, but you could also code. How Good. It. Right, exactly. You wouldn't want to do my graph because my graph is <laughs> atrocious. But if you did it on your graphs, you sh you could go over to four, and it should intersect around nine. It looks like mine would be around eight. But yes, I agree. Give yourself give. Clark a point for that. Okay, any other questions? Yeah. How do you know which um, one is C and which one is D? Um, okay, so let me ask you, does it make sense up here? The question was how do we know which one's D, which one's C? Does it make sense why D is on the x-axis? Okay. No. Okay, so um, does let, it, matter? it does matter, yes. So, oh, I, I, okay, go ahead, explain. Because, so, the, Wait, time out. You guys, you can start on your homework. You do not have to listen to these questions, but don't talk. Go ahead. OK, 
Okay, would you agree that, um, so let's do it this way. Does the cost of the taxi ride depend on how far you go? Or does how far you go depend on how much you're paying? How much it costs? The which what? How far you go determines how much you pay. Yeah. Right, how far you go determines how much yeah. you pay. Okay, so that means how much you pay is dependent upon how far you go, right? So the the variable that is dependent along upon the other one goes on the y-axis. And the one that is independent goes on the X. Does that help? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Lydia. So the hamburger one? Yeah. Yeah. What's the question? Right here. Right. Exactly. Exactly. It would not make sense to have the percent down here and the time up here because the moisture content does not affect the time that it takes to cook it, but the moisture content is dependent upon how long you cook it. Yes. Other questions? Okay, so you guys have a homework assignment that a lot of us are starting on. You want to hear the song? No. How do you really feel? All right, let's go ahead and get started.